With the Ark nearing completion, the most daunting challenge still awaited Noah, gathering two of every kind of animal on Earth. The sheer magnitude of the task seemed insurmountable. How could he possibly locate and gather creatures from the highest mountains to the deepest jungles, from the scorching deserts to the frozen wastelands? The task seemed impossible, even absurd. In a time before history books, when tales were whispered around flickering fires, there lived a righteous man named Noah. The world was a chaotic and wicked place, far different from the paradise God had created. Saddened by the darkness in men's hearts, God decided to cleanse the earth with a great flood. Yet, amidst the impending destruction, God saw a glimmer of hope in Noah. Noah was a good man, a beacon of faith in a world consumed by corruption. He listened to God's voice and obeyed his commands without question. One day, God spoke to Noah, revealing his plan to send a flood that would wash away wickedness. He instructed Noah to build something extraordinary, an ark, a vessel so immense it would shelter two of every living creature from the coming deluge. This was no ordinary task. The ark had to be enormous, strong enough to withstand the fury of the storm. But even more daunting was the challenge of gathering animals from across the globe, creatures of every shape and size, predator and prey alike. The fate of all living things rested on Noah's shoulders, a responsibility both heavy and humbling. Noah, a skilled craftsman, devoted himself to the monumental task of building the ark. He followed God's precise instructions, carefully selecting the finest gopher wood and sealing the ark inside and out with pitch. Day after day, year after year, Noah and his sons toiled tirelessly, their hammers echoing through the valley. The ark was a marvel of engineering, a testament to Noah's faith and obedience. It was divided into compartments, creating a labyrinth of spaces designed to house a staggering diversity of life. There were stalls for the cattle, cages for the birds, and pens for the creeping things. Fresh water and food were stored in abundance, provisions for a journey of unknown length. As the ark took shape, so did the whispers of doubt and mockery from the skeptical villagers. They scoffed at Noah's warnings of a great flood, dismissing it as the ramblings of a madman. But Noah remained steadfast in his faith, his conviction fueled by the divine whispers that guided his every step. With the ark nearing completion, the most daunting challenge still awaited Noah, gathering two of every kind of animal on earth. The sheer magnitude of the task seemed insurmountable. How could he possibly locate and gather creatures from the highest mountains to the deepest jungles, from the scorching deserts to the frozen wastelands? The task seemed impossible, even absurd. Yet, Noah never doubted God's promise to provide. He knew that with God, all things were possible. His faith was the compass that would guide him through this seemingly impossible endeavor. As the last planks were fitted and the final seam sealed with pitch, Noah turned his attention to the heavens. He waited for a sign, a whisper of guidance from the divine voice that had set him on this extraordinary path. The fate of the world, it seemed, hung in the balance. And then a miracle unfolded. As if summoned by an invisible hand, animals began to arrive at the ark. From the dense jungles and vast plains they came, a procession of creatures both wondrous and strange. The air hummed with the sound of buzzing wings, trumpeting calls, and the padding of countless paws. There were majestic lions with their flowing manes, lumbering elephants with their trunk held high, and graceful gazelles with eyes like pools of melted chocolate. Monkeys chattered from the treetops, slithering snakes parted the tall grasses, and colorful birds of paradise painted the sky with their vibrant plumage. The sight was awe-inspiring, a testament to the boundless creativity of God's creation. It defied all earthly logic, yet there they were, drawn to the ark by a force they couldn't comprehend, but instinctively obeyed. Miracles of Obedience News of the animal gathering spread like wildfire, drawing curious onlookers from distant villages. What they witnessed left them speechless with a mixture of fear and awe. The animals, normally wary of each other and of humans, moved with a newfound tranquility. Predators walked alongside prey, their natural instincts seemingly subdued. The air crackled with an invisible energy, a tangible manifestation of God's power orchestrating this extraordinary event. It was a miracle unfolding before their eyes, a testament to the divine plan that governed all creation. Even the most skeptical onlookers couldn't deny the evidence before their eyes. 
This was no mere coincidence. It was a demonstration of God's power, a clear sign that Noah was indeed a chosen servant. The mystery of the migrations. How did the animals find their way to the ark, some traveling unimaginable distances? Some speculate that God guided the creatures with an invisible hand, a gentle nudge in the right direction. Others believe that God instilled in the animals an instinct, a primal urge to seek the safety of the ark. The journey itself was fraught with challenges. Mountain ranges had to be crossed, vast deserts traversed, and raging rivers navigated. Yet the animals persevered, driven by an unseen force, their every step a testament to the miracle unfolding. It's a mystery that continues to intrigue theologians and scholars alike. But one thing is certain, the arrival of the animals was a testament to the power of faith and a resounding confirmation of God's promise to Noah. Predators and prey side by side. Within the confines of the ark, another miracle transpired. Natural enemies, who would normally clash in a fight for survival, coexisted peacefully. The lion lay down with the lamb, the wolf with the kid, the ark became a sanctuary, a testament to the transformative power of God's grace. The air, thick with the scent of hay and animal musk, was strangely calm. A hush had fallen over the ark, a sense of peace that defied the chaos that had engulfed the world outside. It was as if the animals themselves sensed the gravity of their situation, the weight of the world resting on their furry shoulders. Noah and his family worked tirelessly, ensuring each animal was fed and cared for. It was a Herculean task, but they were fueled by their faith and the knowledge that they were playing a vital role in God's plan for redemption. Two by two, they arrive. Pairs of every living creature arrived at the ark, just as God had commanded. Two by two they came, male and female, a living testament to God's desire to preserve his creation. The ark, once a symbol of hope in a world consumed by darkness, was now teeming with life a floating microcosm of the world that was about to be cleansed. The ark groaned under the weight of its precious cargo, a symphony of sounds emanating from within. The chirping of crickets mingled with the trumpeting of elephants, the hiss of snakes with the roar of lions. It was a cacophony of creation, a testament to the diversity of life that God had entrusted to Noah's care. As the last of the animals crossed the threshold and disappeared into the ark's depths, a sense of peace descended upon Noah. He had fulfilled his part of the covenant. The rest was in God's hands. Now, all that remained was to wait for the storm. A symphony of sounds and scents. Inside the ark, a symphony of sounds and scents filled the air. The lowing of cattle mingled with the roar of lions, the trumpeting of elephants with the chatter of monkeys. The air was thick with the smells of hay, animal musk, and the sweet scent of unknown fruits brought by exotic birds. Despite the cacophony and the close quarters, a strange sense of peace pervaded the ark. The animals, guided by an unseen hand, settled into their temporary homes. The predators, their instincts seemingly subdued, coexisted with their prey. It was a testament to the power of God's grace, a microcosm of the paradise that had been lost and would one day be restored. It was a floating ark of hope, carrying the seeds of a new beginning. a world contained within. The ark, now a floating menagerie, was a microcosm of the world outside. It contained a dazzling array of life, from the smallest insects to the largest mammals. Each creature, from the majestic to the seemingly insignificant, played a vital role in the delicate balance of God's creation. Within the ark's wooden walls, a new order emerged. The rhythms of life continued, undisturbed by the raging storm outside. Animals ate, slept, and bred their existence a testament to the resilience of life and the promise of a new dawn. As the days turned into nights and the nights into days, Noah and his family tended to their charges. They were exhausted but undeterred, their faith fueled by the miracle unfolding around them. They were witnesses to God's grace, custodians of a future that was yet to be written. Safe in the shadow of the ark, and then the rains came Torrents of water poured from the heavens, flooding the earth as God had promised. The wicked perished in the deluge, their cries swallowed by the roaring winds and the crashing waves. But the ark, a beacon of hope amidst the chaos, rode the waves safely, its precious cargo protected by the hand of God. 
the ark, a symbol of faith and obedience, had weathered the storm. Within its wooden womb, a new chapter in the story of humanity was about to begin. The animals, saved from the deluge, would be the seeds of a renewed creation, a testament to God's enduring love for his creation. And so, the tale of Noah's ark is passed down through generations, a story of faith, obedience, and the miraculous power of God's grace. It reminds us that even in the darkest of times, hope endures, carried on the wings of a dove and the sturdy timbers of a vessel built on faith.